Okay, this week I'll be getting into chapter 4, which covers coping with urges. And the chapter starts off with a dictionary definition of what an urge is and everything. And like, uh, they do kind of quote, like, uh, quote it to like scratch and, and itch and everything. They just like get like poison ivy, you have to sit there and scratch and everything. And even though like it would, for the short term, it would feel good if you scratch it and everything. But in the long term, it wouldn't actually like, uh, be very good for you to sit there and continually scratch that urge and everything. And it goes into like uh, uh, beliefs about urges. It gives like many like unrealistic and realistic uh, uh, different viewpoints. Like the unrealistic one would be like my urges are unbearable. When in actuality, the like, realistic would be they they will be uncomfortable if that you pass. Another unrealistic one would be urges only stop when I give in, and realistically, it would be only last seconds to minutes. And they're usually sh uh, short ones, maybe followed by like one long one. And I uh, continue in with unrealistic, my urges make me use. And realistically, it's only like a, a choice to use or not. And you can sit there and write out the urge. And it does pass and everything. Another unrealistic is the urges are a sign that my addictive behavior is getting worse. And when realistically, it's actually a normal part of recovery. And it's, it subsides over uh, time. The longer you st uh, stay sober or stay clean, the less likely you're going to get that um, urge to u uh, use with your addictive behavior. Uh, going into another unrealistic, uh, giving in to an urge isn't harmful. Re when realistically, it's reinforcing that negative behavior, which, like with me, drinking would lead to getting drunk uh, quite constantly, if not every single day, which is actually very harmful. Uh, unrealistically, uh, an unrealistic another one would be must get rid of urges. And realistically though, urges are normal and they're just part of the behavior. Unrealistic would be I'm self-destructive or one do things uh, that are self-destructive. When and, uh, realistically, like the brain becomes hardwired to do th certain things because like uh, it seeks pleasure, like uh, with uh, like with me with drinking, like uh, oh hey this uh, stuff is good, like uh, it releases like a bunch of dopamine in your head, and like hey yes, get me some more of that and everything. So like um, it's not that, like uh, not necessarily like uh, a bad, but with uh, uh, unrealistically, it's. Uh, seeking pleasure pleasure like you want to tr try to find something instead of like a uh, uh, self-destructive behavior like drinking you may want to like uh, find something productive like i do with uh getting into physical fitness and everything and last one for unrealistic is i use because i like to and when uh, realistically uh, it might be true in the beginning but then it leads down like uh you end up sacrificing your long-term goals for like short-term pleasure and like a short term reward like um oh hey it's the weekend i deserve a drink or whatever when like your uh long term it isn't going to help help you set yourself up for success and everything and like uh it goes into identifying triggers like uh like for me a trigger would be like the smell of beer or like uh liquor and everything it'd be like oh my it brings back like uh brings back memories of one in the drink and everything and they uh they have several worksheets in there, like uh, uh, with the, how to cope with the uh, triggers, and one of, some of the things like are distracting yourself, like uh, going for a walk, reading a book, finding something where like uh, once you do find like uh, yourself getting triggered by it's like something like for me the smell of alcohol, getting myself out of the situation, maybe you know, going for like a walk to try and like uh, get my mind off it or something, or picking up a book uh, to try and like. Um, uh, get myself away from that the memory of one and the drink and everything uh, and they go into like a ba uh, basic strategies like how like uh, avoid situations like um, avoiding bars uh, escape uh, number two would be escape like if you're walking by a bar and you like uh, you try to get yourself out of that situation by escaping uh, and again number three would be distracting yourself like I said like you could maybe go for a walk read a book uh, find something where like um you can distract yourself from that. Like, uh, you can sit there and you can try like uh, uh, develop coping uh, coping mechanisms, like uh, or statements, like uh, 
I used to use so when I went there, so I need to get away from there and I don't go in there anymore. Uh, and you uh, sit there and you rate the urge, like uh, it beginning, it might be, you might rate it kind of high, it might be very powerful, but as time goes on, they tend to subside and like uh, you might get the same urge like a few years later and it, you might rate it like uh, much lower. And it's like, uh, you got to recall the moments of clarity, like, uh, oh, hey, yeah, I did uh, this before uh, when you're through your journey. And like this, this used to work and everything. So like uh, trying to find uh, moments of clarity, not just when you stopped using, but maybe before while you were still using, you had moments of clarity that led, led you to stop drinking for uh, maybe a day or two or whatever. You can use, uh, go back to like, okay, well, how was I successful? And you can also try and picture your future, like, okay, like, uh, if I continue to drink and everything, where does this lead me? And it's probably not going to lead me into a good future. So, like, uh, you picture yourself not drinking and, like, okay, well, it might lead me to a better future. And you, yeah, you use the past, so you look at your past behaviors and you look at, okay, well, uh, drinking to get drunk all the time isn't really uh, productive. So, like, uh, you build on that to try and... Uh, get yourself to become more uh, productive at least for yourself and everything and uh, when it comes to urges and everything like sometimes it comes in waves and you uh, need to fi uh, find ways like that you can just like ride it out and everything like uh, getting back to like the couple examples of uh, going for a walk or reading a book that I used and uh, another big thing is uh, to uh, finish it up would be call out uh, call on role models and coaches, maybe like you're in like an out, uh, outpatient recovery or something and you use like the group or like uh, your counselor for that. You also reach out for your support. You set your support system, like friends, family that um, want you to see, uh, see you stay clean and or sober and everything. And uh, the last thing is to accept the urge. I'm like, okay, well, I, I feel like drinking right now. I know it's not going to be uh, worth it for me to, and just uh, getting back to the one like where you ride out the wave, and then you, it, it'll pass. And uh, those are like the basic strategies. Some of the, like the advanced strategies that like uh, that you get into after months or years, like uh, you ha would have to move beyond the avoidance. Like uh, you might not necessarily be able to like uh, avoid all the bars or whatever. So like you might have to like. Uh, walk by or like drive by places that you like oh yeah I used to drink there and everything but like uh you know, you're not necessarily going to be able to avoid them so like uh you got to go back to the basic strategies and go like oh well if I go in there I know I'm going to start drinking again so I like uh you just uh remind yourself when you can't avoid stuff and like um and then like uh, which leads to bringing out the urge is like okay yes like uh when i like uh can't avoid a bar or something like uh it brings out the urge to want to drink but then you remind yourself like okay well uh drinking will lead me down to a negative consequence and everything so i don't want to get into that and everything and another one is uh refuse to use in social situations like um a recent example for me would be at the athlete next games i was around people who uh did drink and everything but like uh i know like i can't drink safely so it's just like okay well like uh it's something that i can't partake in so like uh, in situations like that it, it, even after years it's like okay well i have to abstain and everything from using even though people are using and uh, everything so there are so like uh, uh again back to the first one you can't move beyond avoidance but like uh you got to realize like okay i have a pro like uh i had a problem and if i start using again that problem will become back with those old behaviors and everything and like there's um getting into like a uh uh what they call deads uh it's an acronym for like a, the d equals uh like deny and delay e is escape your trigger a there's two of them attack the urge accept the urge d is distract with activity like a like a use the walking and reading the book uh, examples before and s is substitute for addictive thinking like uh it, it gets back to like crying uh kind of rewiring your brain like uh with uh wanting to uh use because like um uh your brain like seeks wants to seek out pleasure so instead of using the destructive patterns of like a drinking or using you try to like uh, uh find other activities to uh, cope that are much more healthier
and then, uh, they, uh, they got uh, thinking strategies that get into like the uh, near the end of the chapter like um, like uh, they talk about destructive images and self-talk and like uh, how you want to kind of switch that uh, try and like a uh, you know get into like a uh, uh, switching the negative self-talk into try and get more positive self-talk and everything and it ends in like a uh, another like a like ABCs of like a, the rational emotive behavior therapy like a is uh, activating event B's beliefs about event C consequence of uh, of, of belief and D would be dispute your beliefs E would be effective new beliefs it's that deals with like situations that may arise like a uh, the example they give in the handbook would be about like a maybe your boss uh, yells at you for like uh, messing something up and like uh, you go down the list and like uh, it gives the example uh, the the boss example on how you would uh, attack like a, a negative belief and everything and you know switch the negative belief to try and rationalize like a uh, work through instead of just having an emotional reaction kind of take a step back pause and like think about it like and like um and getting back to last week with journaling it could be something you could journal about like okay well this pissed me off and like uh yeah getting it down it's writing so that way like you can like um work through it and like uh, getting back to like uh can like working with counselors or like a therapist or something or your support group you can like uh, okay hey look you can call up someone and be like hey look this is what i wrote down this was and they you can get with someone to t talk through it and everything and actually like um work through the emotions so you're not just the uh, reacting all the time like a uh, knee-jerk reaction so next week i'll be getting into chapter uh five and uh after I get through all these chapters, I'll be going through like uh, different uh, uh, topics and ideas and everything. So like uh, I've got a few already in mind. And so if anyone wants to comment and, uh, about something else that I, uh, a topic they would like to see, just drop in the comments and everything.